Mark Blitzarves is set to play his 200th AFL match this week. It's been an amazing journey to get to this point, with Blitzarves selected by the Cats with pick number 54 in the 2012 rookie draft as a Category B rookie. Not even he could have imagined when he made the leap from a career in athletics to football that it could have turned out this way. A two-time best and fairest winner at Geelong, Blitzarves is one of the most versatile players the game has seen. He's played in the ruck, down back, as a midfielder and as a run with player, and that's been all in one game. The recently turned 30-year-old continues to be one of Geelong's most valuable players and will again be crucial to their premiership hopes in 2021. It also happens that I grew up with Mark and now I thought it would be a perfect time to unpack his journey ahead of his 200th AFL game. Blitz, welcome to the Over the PA podcast. Thank you, mate. I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, inviting me on. Um, I see here it's called the Milestone Zone. Is that, is that the name <laughs> no, of the that was a work. That was a working title. Oh, that was a working title. Yeah. I like it, the Milestone Zone. Rightio. We're going over the PA, yeah, so yeah, right, yeah. do a play on the <laughs> public announce system. Um, obviously, I work for the AFL Players Association, and um, yeah, so over the PA sort of fits, fits nicely. I like that. Thanks for having me. Good stuff. I think um, it would be great just to really go back and, and talk about your journey and unpack where you've come from. Um, obviously, there's been, there's been a lot made of the transition from athletics to football, but um, yeah, I think growing up together, we were long-time family friends and um, I thought it would be yeah, a great opportunity to get you on and get an understanding of who you are as a, as a person. Yeah, no, it's good. Um, geez, where do I begin? Uh, well, yeah, obviously we've been friends for a long time now, whole family, so... We're really lucky in that regard that um, I suppose we're all involved in the industry now and um, obviously me playing with Cam and Zach and you working with the AFLPA and um, just we're all involved in sport as general. That's how we became family friends and um, to know you and Cam before even Zach was born. Um, we've been through a lot and uh, yeah, I suppose growing up in Sunbury together, we went to school together, played a lot of sport together. Um, yeah, again, very lucky that Myself, you, Cam and all that, where we've remained great friends and family friends and for our parents to sit at the games and, and um, catch up and, and watch their, their sons go out on the field, it's, uh, yeah, it's very, very fortunate we are. Yeah, for sure. Um, just going back to, to your background, so um, your mum, Cara, and your father, Andres. Andres. Or, or Andy, as we... Andy, yeah. <laughs> it's probably easier to say. So they both represented Australia, Australia in the Olympics in basketball and... I think sport's always been a, a massive part of, of your life growing up. Got an older brother, Chris, younger brother, a uh, young brother, younger sister, Sarah, who Sarah. Um, is representing Australia at the Olympics in basketball now, which is, which is an awesome achievement and it's awesome to see, um, see her achieving her dream as well. So what was that like growing up in, in a family that's clearly um, hell-bent on hell perform- high performance? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it was good. They they didn't push us into any sport, but they encouraged us to to do sport from a young age, which was um, fantastic. And um, yeah, something that um, again I've mentioned before, but loved and um, opportunities arise from that, and to make great friends and um, yeah, lifelong bonds. So um, yeah, encourage encourage sport from a young young age. I reckon by eight, I'd tried tennis, cricket, indoor cricket, <laughs> footy, basketball, um, athletics as well, and um, yeah, that was for Sarah and Chris as well. They tried them all, and um, yeah, just just obviously they didn't push us in any sport, but they encouraged us. And then as we got older, then we sort of shifted to a to a sport we preferred. But um, yeah, as you mentioned, Dad went to the '76 Montreal Olympics. Mum made the '84 Los Angeles Olympic squad, but a couple of weeks before, she um, hurt her knee. Not too bad, but probably not, not enough to say something, but she did and ended up needing a RICO, um, which is one of her sort of bigger regrets that she wasn't able to go to the 84 Olympics, but um, made a world champs. And then, as you mentioned, for Sarah to now um, come from where she's come from to, to be in the Opals team as an Olympian, it's, uh, yeah, it's good. I remember we were all playing basketball in, the, in your backyard and my backyard growing up as four, five, six-year-olds. So to see where um, we've come from and her representing her country, it's pretty special. Absolutely. Played a, a lot of basketball together. I think we had five premierships, I reckon. Superus. Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. Junior basketball. That's right. We are uh, well, the Aussies for indoor cricket as well. Yeah. You were yeah. on leg spin getting tonked for six <laughs> <laughs> in indoor cricket. But, yeah. Um, caught that. Yeah, you caught that. <laughs> NBA hang time as well. Yeah. Jeez, we played a lot. So, um, But yeah, all our, I suppose all our family friend memories too is all from a lot of sport. 
um, growing up with the Little Athletics and all that. So, um, yeah, very fond memories of all that. For sure. We also played one season of footy together. Um, so we played under 11s in for the Sunbury Lions and um, you probably hadn't played a lot of footy up until that point. Maybe just kicking around in the backyard. You come out se- um, second in the league, best and fairest as well. So you're obviously really talented as a footballer, but it wasn't your number one passion, was it? No, it wasn't. <coughs> um, but I enjoyed it. I, I love playing footy. I love the team aspect of that and basketball and everything. So to get a season of under-11s with you and um, the other guys we played with, um, your dad coach, my mum was the runner, gave away a few 50-metre penalties <laughs> and your dad sprayed her. We've got some vision <laughs> of that. <I> mean. oh. <laughs> so mum's still flat with Andrew from that. But um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was something I really enjoyed and um, I suppose I'm just pretty competitive so I wanted to try and win and, and I didn't really know what I was doing out there but I just get the footy, kick it forward, try and kick goals. So um, I think we lost the prelim that year and Mitch Banner <laughs> towed us up. And, yeah, um, former Port player. Former Port player. Yeah. Um, from memories, he looked... 30 as an 11 year old (laughs) he Um, was very mature but yeah it was probably athletics and probably the day um, I know you might get to it but I was just thinking about it too was um, when dad carried the Olympic torch and we all went to Melton I think it was around that area where he did the torch relay leading up to the Sydney Olympics and seeing all that and then watching the Sydney Olympics was probably um, in 2000 so I was 9 years old just before my first year of footy but um, yeah that's probably the thing that got me right into athletics just loving that seeing Kathy win the 400 and um, yeah, obviously when Dad carried the torch relay through that area, that was probably something that got me into athletics and a real passion. Um, but I was never going to choose one sport at that age. So basketball with Supers and obviously the footy as well was, was something that I really enjoyed. Yep. You also played a season at Taylor's Lakes footy, but we don't really like, like to count that. Yeah. It's more, uh, more of the summary lines. Yeah, we don't count that. Yeah. No. Um, so, yeah, as you mentioned, athletics was a massive part um, of your childhood growing up and remember little athletics at Boardman Stadium going up there um, you would still hold multiple records in a number of different events and one recollection that really stands out to me is when you'd go in the when you'd go in the high jump and it was probably one of your your best events at, at that really young age people would just sit on the mat or sit around that area just watching you go about your high jump what what yeah. was that yeah sort of what was that like <coughs> when um, yeah you, you were coming through through the ranks and it was clearly something that you were you were really good at. Yeah, it, it helped. I had so many mates in in a little athletics too. So we'd do the events, and from a young age, I remember you do your event, you get your ticket, you sprint off to the to the guys who are going <laughs> to write down your time, your ticket, then you give it to your mum, so she's going to put it in the magazine, and then you go play cricket or you get a dollar to buy some lollies from the the shop. So they're all the little athletic memories, um, and then the events in between were just some of the stuff that you did, but. Yeah, I, the high jump was, was always good fun. It was something I really enjoyed. And as you mentioned, everyone cheering as an 11-year-old, <laughs> 10-year-old, you feel pretty good. So yeah. um, I love my time at Sunbury Lit Athletics. Um, again, great mates. And um, yeah, I, I've been, haven't been back there since um, finishing up, but I've been obviously to the Boardman Stadium and had a look around and all that. Um, and then Keel Lit Athletics was the other one yep. from under-14s and under-15s, and that was... I was getting a bit more serious about my athletics, and I had a couple of really close mates that were serious about athletics too, competing for Keel, or which is why I went there. But, um, yeah, again, very good memories. Sure. Um, another thing as well, just as we're sort of touching on childhood, remember, like, so you do a paper, ra- paper round, and most people ride and do their paper round where they're, where they're delivering newspapers to people's front doors and stuff. You used to run it. <laughs> as a bit of a... Yeah, training session. session. Yeah. Yeah, looking back, I can't believe I did that now, but um, yeah, probably year seven was the first job I ever had, paper route, and I just thought, yeah, Emu Bottom, that'd be all right. And Emu Bottom's this little part in summary where <laughs> it's like it's pretty hilly. sort of farmland. <laughs> it's it's hilly and yeah. it's just off a main road and the the houses are 100 metres apart. So <laughs> I'm thinking, how am I going to do this? So I've, I've reeled mum into doing it and helping me. So she's had to drive. So twice a week we fold the papers and the pamphlets. That takes a couple of hours. I get sick of it after half an hour, so <laughs> mum, mum will do it. And then we load them all up and because and it's 200 houses or so and the, the one paper's like this big, we've got like three big toy boxes that we can only fit. So we've got to do half the route, come back and then do the other half. <laughs> so it took three hours and yeah, mum would load up 10 on my arm. She'd go do this street. I'd run up and down the hill, do this street and we'd <laughs> meet. And so we had, we had a good system down pat that... Um, looking back, it was a lot of hill work and a lot of running, and I think it um, sort of put me in pretty good stead for yeah. 
a bit more resilience with my body going forward. For sure. Because I did it for all the way up until just out of high school. Yeah. So seven years, <laughs> six years straight. Yeah. Good commitment. Yeah. Um, as you got a bit more serious with your athletics as well, so you represented Victoria, represented Australia at underage level as well. Your dream of representing Australia at the Olympics was, um, yeah, probably burning pretty hard for you. And um, I think long distance running was some was a, I guess a, a form of event where you really separated yourself from the pack as well. So a lot of people remember you as a as a steeplechaser, but let's debunk that myth. You weren't a steeplechaser, were you? Yeah, I hated the steeple bend. <laughs> um, have you ever done a steeplechase race? I have. Yeah. yeah. How'd you go? Uh, not great. I didn't like the the part where you sort of jump in the water and then you got to run. And yeah. And then you you're wet. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. It's tough. Yeah, don't wear socks and don't yeah, wear yeah. socks in your shoes. But um, so when the Geelong opportunity came up, I was still yeah. I was twenty years of age and still loving my running and and yeah, trying to make it at an elite level. So um, yeah, it's something that probably when I was sixteen, I decided like athletics is for me. That's the one I'm going to finish up with all sports and really go um, and try and make something of it. So. Um, yeah, 19 or 20, I started to have a couple of good performances and, um, yeah, the, the Olympic, I wanted to make the Olympics. That was my goal, has always been my goal growing up, as I mentioned, since seeing Dad carry the torch and the Sydney 2000 Olympics. So I said I'd love to be an Olympian and do that. Um, and obviously it wasn't to be, but, yeah, when the Geelong opportunity arose, they let me continue as well being signed as a rookie, being paid from the club as a Category B rookie, they let me have that next athletic season to continue, which was really good of them. They didn't have to, and they did, and they essentially funded all my trips because it's a pretty amateur sport at the level I was athletic. So they were funding my trips. Got a couple of free flights and accommodation, but everything else that went with it all was pretty much paid from Geelong Football Club to get me to these events. And um, yeah, it was it wasn't to be, um, but. I did a couple of steeplechase races, which I didn't enjoy and I wasn't very good at. And 1500 was always my favourite event. So, um, yeah, again, as a 20-year-old that season, I had a pretty good season, ran a few um, bigger PBs. My, I ended up running 343 for the 1500, which, um, yeah, I, I was wrapped with. But again, uh, probably 336, 337 is a qualifying you for the team. Yep. So I'm six or seven seconds, which is 50 or so metres off. Mm -hmm qualifying and then to actually compete at the Olympics the the Jets there's 15 of them running yep. 330 mm -hmm. so as a 20 year old 20 year old I was I was a little bit off but that was that was my main goal yep. um, it wasn't to be and Matt, who knows at a as a 24 year old in 20, uh, 2016 sorry yeah what would have happened but um, you probably would have been getting. hitting your peak at that time but probably yeah, for the 1500 yeah yeah, yeah yeah I guess the opportunity to come to Geelong um, and tried a different sport. Like you could have banked on just waiting and, and waiting for that um, opportunity for the Brio twenty sixteen Olympics. But yeah, that opportunity to come to Geelong and, and have a trial. Um, what? How did that come about? Um, so I'm I'm constantly I'm still training hard with athletics. Yep. Um, Cam's just been drafted. So your brother Cameron went got drafted in the twenty ten draft. Twenty eleven was his first year. Yep. And so um, Andrew Guthrie being my under-11 summary uh, Lions coach, <laughs> um, as he says it, coached me. And um, I think he'd always mentioned throughout, like, school and all that, that if you ever want to think about footy and all that. And I think it helped that I had a bit of endurance background with middle distance running and I was six foot five, six foot six. Um, that potentially could maybe turn me into a footballer. So he would, I think he had hounded Wellesley and the recruiters for a little bit. Um, and I remember they called in April of 2011 and I said, thanks, but no thanks. Yeah. Not that, not that rude, but like yep. I just was set on athletics yep. and I loved it. And then I think they mentioned it again to Andrew and then they called again in sort of August, September. Um, and I'd always want to do the, the next season for athletics, but um, I just thought oh, I'll come down for a trial. What's the harm? Like yep. I've got a day off. Um, be cool to see the facilities and... Maybe meet a Cats player. I was a Carlton fan at the time, but <laughs> maybe meet a Cats player. But um, So they got me in the off-season, though. So they just won the flag and they were all overseas, um, wherever they were in their off-season trip. So um, it was probably October of 2011. Mm -hmm. Came down um, and just did some kicking with 
uh, Paul Hood, I think Troy Salwood was there, who was captaining the VFL at the time, yeah. and a few others, and and yeah, just did some kicks and all that. But essentially, it was because of your dad that got me the trial, um, and then yeah, I ended up meeting Wellesy and Bar- Neil Barm at the time there, and um, they said they're pretty keen to have a chat to my parents, see where they, what they're thinking too, and um, yeah, again, I had no idea what I was doing. I was just kicking a couple of footballs and. Yeah. Um, we'd done a few training sessions together indoor yeah. at the Basel Stadium leading up <laughs> just to make sure my ball dropped yeah. which I might need you to show me a couple <laughs> from the, we'll go out from after the this. weekend's game yeah. <laughs> um, and then probably a couple of weeks later when I said oh what, what changed me was seeing the stadium and the facilities and the opportunity of potentially um, joining a team sport yeah. from an individual athletics is quite individual you've got your training group but the team sport aspect was something that I'd be really keen to explore um, and then a couple of weeks later, I said to mum and dad, oh, can you guys be home at sort of this time? I think um, st- the recruiter's coming to have a chat to you just about to Geelong. And they're like, oh, yeah. What well, dad was said, he's like, oh, yeah, whatever. Like, <laughs> they're going to come talk to us. That'd be good. Yeah. And then three, four territories rock up and it's Scotty, Neil Baum and Stephen Wells all at our front lawn in Sunbury. And dad's like, oh, yeah. geez, this might be a bit serious. more serious than we thought. <laughs> yeah. So it just sort of spiralled from there. And yeah the negotiations and allow them allowing me to continue my running for the next season I was just yeah forever in their debt it was something that I was um yeah very fortunate position to be involved in yeah at the time the category b rookies system was sort of coming in and um I guess the opportunity to to get someone on on your list from another sport um sort of came about so I guess that that was that was the um the big selling point for for John with someone like you who probably hadn't played footy for six years or, or whatever and um, the opportunity to get you across and really um, capitalise on, on your athletic attributes and I think it's yeah obviously obviously paid off in dividends. Um, so your first pre-season at, at the club um, and that was after you'd finished your obviously your athletics career. So you, you played one VFL game, didn't you, as well, against um, Essendon? Was that here? Yeah, that was so... So I got drafted... End of 2011. Yep. And then kept doing the athletics and then um, was overseas. Wellesy called me a few times, didn't qualify. And then uh, start of July was my first yep. uh, week at the club, mm-hmm. 2012. Um, did a mini pre-season for July, four weeks pre-season. Um, and then played four VFL games. Yep. And then Nida's has dropped me for finals. <laughs> I'll never <laughs> forgive you, Nida. <Yeah. laughs> and they won the flag that year, the VFL team. So. Yeah, yeah. And, and the next year you come in, and I think at the, at the time there was a few injuries to um, a number of the different sort of senior listed ruckmen. So Trent West, Nathan Vardy, and Hamish McIntosh were all injured, and there's this bean pole at 198 centimetres who weighs 75 kilos maybe at that time. Yeah. All of a sudden you're playing ruck against <laughs> Sam Jacobs and Aaron Sandlins. Yeah. Um, were, were you ready for that? Um, no, not at all. No, looking <laughs> back, no, I wasn't. But I was... I was Pretty keen to prove myself. When I made that decision to go from athletics to football, I sort of thought to myself, there's no turning back. This has to work. There's, if this doesn't work, I'm not going back to athletics. This has to work. Yeah. So that was my attitude. So I just made sure I did everything I could to try and be as ready as possible. Um, and, yeah, you say leave no stone unturned. But um, And just to prove, I suppose, to myself that I could do it and everyone else who thought probably I can't do it, just wanted to prove oh, I like proving people wrong. Um, so yeah, that pre-season, I, I ticked off everything in pre-season, I got through injury free and I must have done a few things right in match play because I was, again, very fortunate, There's unfortunately for them they had injuries, but that's how opportunities start and you've got to take them. I don't think any player's ever really ready um, to play their first game um, and then you sort of just think what you're doing, but um, yeah, got a couple of pre-season games. Um, I think down here against Adelaide and Collingwood and my first one was in Freo against Aaron Sanderlands yeah. and I'm thinking, this guy is huge. He's wearing <laughs> these massive baseball shoes. <laughs> and I'm like, what am I doing in the ruck? But <laughs> again, the, the, um, the instruction was to run, run, run all day and just try and nullify any of his hits that he could. Yeah. Um, and yeah, to play round one against Hawthorne Easter Monday, I didn't know how big that was leading up to it. You sort of know yep. a little bit about it, but looking back now... Having played a few Easter Mondays, it's amazing. I'm very fortunate that that was my first game. And again, Jordan Lewis, they were five goals up, Hawks at half time. Jordan Lewis comes up to me and he's like, half time, he's like, 
what are you doing out here, mate? <laughs> and I, agree, I smile and agree, and I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> but we ended up coming back and winning the game, which is good. So, yeah. Um, yeah, unfortunately, they were injured, but fortunately enough, that gave me the opportunity. And yep. because they had substantial injuries, the coaches said, doesn't matter how you go, you're, you're in for a month, you're in for six weeks, guaranteed. Just enjoy your football and try and improve. And, um, yeah, the, that was um, a great opportunity. And the fact that I was able to stay injury-free and put games together, is, I think, is what helped the improvement as well. Yeah, I guess your ability to play ruck, your ability to play as a defensive mid... Um, at that stage, you're probably running six, 17, 16, 17 Ks for five touches. <laughs> <laughs> um, Your brother likes to get... Zach Guthrie likes to get after me, actually, with yeah. this. We played round four in my first season. We played North Melbourne, I think. And I ran 16.5 K for four touches. <laughs> and one of those touches I kicked into Todd Goldstein, the man <laughs> of the mark. <laughs> yeah. And so he gives it to me. Four, 4.1 K per touch I was running. Yeah. So the, the next logical question is, how did your understanding of the game evolve and what did you have to do to um, improve yourself in that area? Yeah. Um, yeah, I just tried to fast track myself. So I, I'd um, constantly watching edits, asking questions, um, yeah, making mistakes and then trying to learn from that. So that was probably the, the attitude I took that I just wanted to continue to improve and, um, because I was playing my first year um, and the other ruckman had quite injured I'm I'm thinking to myself well as soon as they're back I'm out of the team so I need to improve and I need to improve so that was sort of the mindset going into it um, and I suppose from that athletics background and running middle distance races in the pre-season uh, I sort of I think it, I think it is a skill I, I sort of was able to push myself in in the running and um, when you're fatigued in games late in quarters uh, you learn to be able to push yourself so I think that was one of my strengths first coming into the into the um, game. And I remember Maxie Rook uh, telling me, you're never going to be as sore as you are. Sorry, you're never going to feel as good as you do day one mm -hmm. in your first day of career. So just get used to all the knocks and stuff. And that was the other thing. Um, I sort of need to adapt, put on weight. Cause I, as you mentioned, I came to the club as about 80 kilos. So I'm about 102 now, so I've had to put on a bit. Um, but I'd get a corky in my first session or first week of training and I'd be out for two weeks because I just hadn't used to getting hit. So um, that was the other thing, trying to harden the body up and, and learn to take hits and, and hit people yourself with tackles and bumps. So, yep. um, and again, the running, that was the running patterns as well? And running patterns yeah. as well, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. So as you mentioned, 16.5K for four touches, <laughs> that need to improve, which um, I think nowadays probably Isaac Smith and Mitch Duncan are our best football runners. Yep. Um, you see them in so much space out in the open, whatever it might be, and you're thinking, how do they get there? But they're very smart of when they mm. do run flat out, when they do get their rest, and um, they just know where the ball's going before the ball gets there, and that's something I'm still trying to learn now. Yep, yep. Um, winning the best and fairest in 2015, um, so how many years is that? So three years, after, four years after you got to the club? Yeah, yep. Well, when you yep. first So I debuted round one, 2013, yep. so 2015, three seasons. Three yep. seasons, yep. So, how did you get from that player who was getting four touches for 17 Ks to a player who's winning the best and fairest? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, the third man up rule. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that was, was still player, in, wasn't it? Yeah. That was good. So, we sort of had a plan with that too, that third man up rule where um, I think the coaches, I, I'd had a consistent three years. I'd played um, 13 and 14 season, were back to back 20. 20 plus games um, and I sort of hadn't missed a training session through injury so that was one thing that I think really helped me um, because of the consistent I'd played 40 or so games back to back and hadn't missed a training session that was helped with my improvement and then 2015 played a bit as a ruck and they thought oh okay well let's from the ruck then can you potentially hover in the midfield and go third man up and if you're going to be in the midfield you're not going to be go to because you're not a genuine midfielder like the yeah Joel Salwood type, yep. so we won't hit the ball to you, but you could ruck that too, so why don't you try and shut out a best play, one of their better players and you do that by rucking and hitting to Joel yourself or hitting to yourself. So that the actual third man out rule did help. We hung around and I suppose we tried not to exploit it, but yep. we used it a lot. And so, so Sandy's trying to deal with our ruckman and then there's someone getting a free run and jump mm. and getting a hit out. So that, that's, that helped a lot. It kept me around the ball and you get some clearances and all that. But um, 
yeah, again, it was probably just my attitude that um, I was trying to learn a lot off Harry to just um, you, just to play desperate and um, play with a bit of mongrel in you. So um, I sort of focused on just um, getting to as many contests as I could in that 2015 season and laying as many tackles. And um, yeah, I think that's probably been my highest tackle season was that 2015 season being around the ball. And um, I think when you're doing those fundamentals right, then you, you do get rewarded with, with touches or goals or, or whatever else. So um, from a club point of view, that's been the worst season we didn't make finals, and um, so from a club performance point of view, it was, it was really disappointing. But um, to have influence as a young player, um, it gave me something to build on for the future seasons. Yeah. I think the value of you as a player, and, and we'll get to moving into the back line, and obviously now you, you're playing everywhere, but um, the value of you as a player is that ability to play in multiple positions, um, your defensive running as well. So, like... You'd play on the wing and you'd be first back. Like that, that's something that you would pride yourself on. Um, yeah, how, how are you able to switch your mentality from playing as a key back to a wingman, to a midfielder, to a ruckman? Um, something I've probably learnt over time. Uh, getting to the club too, um, the coaches talk and the, the leaders talk. We're, we're a defence first club. We value defence. So we're going to get plenty of opportunity to score, but let's defend first. So that was always my attitude. Whatever position I play, wing, obviously as a defender or, or ruck, that um, if I can't get involved in attack, which is quite often, <laughs> um, I'm going to set up defence. So that was a big focus for me too, was my strength in defending and communicating and trying to help the team set up defence. So... Um, that was probably the fundamental of all the positions I've played is I'm going to help defence first and then over time, if I'm playing as a winger or a ruck, I'm trying to then work out if I can attack and get in positions to, to help. Um, and I'm still learning that now, but um, yeah, I think as you talk about strengths of player, that versatility is probably my strength that I'm able to then go from defender to wing to, to ruck. But the other thing is too, they're only starting positions. So I start as a winger, but then when the ball moves, like I could end up as a defender on the wing mm -hmm. or transition from the ruck that now I'm on the wing spot. Yep. You sort of play that position similar however you, however you play it anyway. So yep. um, yeah, I think the less I think about what position I'm playing and just play football, your mind's a bit clearer and the performance goes a bit better. Yeah. And winning the best and fairest in 2018 as well. So... And that year was there were a lot of competitors for that um, for that award. I remember Dangerfield had a, an amazing season. Tim Kelly had an amazing season as well. Um, playing as a, as a backman, that was probably where you're able to s settle down for eight to ten weeks and and really um, play in a position that that really suits you. And, and I thought like probably before you even started, like centre half back was going to be your position going forward. And, and it's turned out that you've been able to play everywhere, but yeah, so you've called that. That's good. Yeah, yeah I like that. Yeah, I probably should have put that on the good record. Prediction. <laughs> that on the record earlier. Um, but yeah, so playing playing back and um, learning from someone like Harry Taylor. I know you've spoken a lot about him um, in terms of your development as well. How how much of an influence has, has Harry had on your career? Yeah, heaps. Um, probably one of the most influential on my career. I think, um, like as a friend, teammate, and mentor, but. Um, yeah, I just ask him a heap of questions, catch up outside of football with him. So we'd always have our little uh, one, two minute um, brief before the game. How are you going to go? What am I going to do? What's he going to do? And, and our debrief post game too. Oh, you did this well. What about this one? And it's amazing how many contests that I wouldn't even remember that I was involved in that Harry would remember. He's amazing that way. But um, yeah, that 2018 season um, trained as a... As a um, midfielder actually for the whole 2018 pre-season and then I think it was round three or four was when I got switched to defence um, again I'm not sure I think that's we had a few injuries we went down I think Harry struggled with plantar fascia that year and yep. um, there was a few others that were battling injuries so we had a random sort of crew back there as defenders but it worked quite well and um, yeah I just really enjoyed um, I enjoy my, all my teammates, but I enjoyed playing down there. And as you mentioned, that consistency, I had eight to ten weeks. I enjoyed trying to take the best forward. Didn't always work Didn't always work out well, but um, I enjoyed that challenge and that's probably something that pushed me. And you've got to find motivation when you're playing games each week. 
motivations might change each week. Oh, I just want to beat this player or I obviously want to win the game. So, um, But, yeah, playing down back and training with Harry was, um, yeah, always great fun. Was a highlight of your career so far? Uh, I hope I haven't had it yet. Yeah. Um, but so oh, I suppose I have had it if you're highlight of my career so far. Um, geez, we should have won the under 11s some rewind, <laughs> should we? We absolutely should have. <laughs> um, if only you kick that snap in the pocket, Ben. No. Should have. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, I really enjoy um, the team aspect. I love coming to the club and training with some of my best mates. So I, I just... I really enjoy that part of it. Um, but playing in milestone games, playing finals at the G in front of 80 or 90,000, sort of win or loss, it's pretty surreal. Yep. And probably haven't, you don't look at it now, but looking back on my career, getting to say I played in front of 90,000 people at the G, that's something pretty special. Um, yep. Yeah, I hope the highlight is to win a flag one day, but we'll, work, we'll continue to work on that. Did you think when you were a 15-year-old and athletics was your dream, um, e even when you first sort of started at Geelong, did you think that that was going to be possible, that you'd be playing 200 games, playing in multiple finals and a dual best and fairest winner? Um, no, no. At 15, I, wouldn't, I didn't even think about footy. Yeah. Um, and then when I got to the club, um, yeah, I, I thought about the team and I wanted to win a flag. That was what I want to do. Yeah. That's what I still want to do. Um, I didn't even think about any of the individual accolades. So... Um, but yeah, to play 200, it's um, again. I'll, I think I'll look back on it as something I'm really happy with. But right now, we've got a job to do this season. So um, I say it will be another game for me. But I'll probably have 20 mates in the crowd that I'll yeah. hopefully get to wave to after a win, um, which would be something pretty special. So yeah, it's good. I've had some really good mates and um, family come to a lot of the games, and um, that's pretty special too. But um, yeah, hopefully, there's a few more games to go to. Yeah. We've been really footy focused, but let's take a shift away from that and yep. go a little bit more off field. So yep. you've done a lot of travelling, um, even during your footy career, and um, you've been to America, you've been to Everest, Mount Everest Base Camp. Yep. Um, how, how do you get that time off in the, in the off season? I'm, I miss the Europe trip with you, Fish and Cam, which <laughs> I've heard some great stories, Ben. Um, <laughs> uh, I really enjoy it. We're so fortunate. Um, if you want to be honest, we, we get... We get paid well and we get two months off yep. every year and we know that. So we're so lucky. So um, I, I like to try and travel. I really enjoy it. So I want to travel as much as we can. And I've been on some great holidays, um, as you mentioned, through all those things. We did Oktoberfest together, which was a uh, bit of a whirlwind <laughs> couple of days. But um, yeah, so you get some really great, amazing opportunities for in the industry we are in. But probably my best trip, as you touched on, was the Everest Base Camp trip. So... Um, Cam Erdley, who played in, uh, he played for the Geelong Cats in 2012 and 2013 was my draft year. Um, one of my really good mates. Um, yeah, his brother passed away uh, through suicide four or five years ago. Where and then the um, Kai Erdley, so the Kai Feller Foundation was created by Cam and um, his mum and their family. So we did the base camp trip, one for a holiday, two for a challenge, but three mainly to try and raise money money for for mental health and um, yeah to, to help with that and to raise it for the Kai Fella Foundation which is doing great things over in WA so um, I think we're able to raise six and a half grand I did the trip with three of my best schoolmates um, which is an amazing opportunity and something yeah it was it was amazing um, and it's one of the hardest things I've ever done that base camp trip um, altitude sickness was <laughs> was got me um, so there was me and three mates and we're walking up base camp and we're a day off base camp and we have no phones, no no social media, there's just no reception up there. And then we get back down and of course we've got a few missed calls but a few messages from all um, our partners and all the thing saying, are you okay, are you okay? Because the day before we got there, um, four footballers airlifted off base camp <laughs> thinking it's us. Yeah. I think... It, for some reason, I heard it was Andrew Johns and his rugby mates, but that's a massive rumour. But I think there's a few <laughs> of the rugby boys. So it's really tough. The altitude gets yeah, you. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that, as you mentioned, the travel, that's probably one of my most special trips um, for a heap of different reasons. Can't recommend it highly enough. But, yeah, we are, we are fortunate enough to, to travel and, um, yeah, it's something I'll probably continue to do even post-footy. Yep. Now, you're based down in Torquay and 
um, obviously with your, your lovely partner, Georgia, who I, I need to bring this up because you forgot to mention her after the 2015 yeah. Western Ferris. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. you ran through a whole list of people that you'd like to thank and you forgot Georgia. But yeah. no, nah, she's been a, a, obviously a really <laughs> big influence on, on your life as well. And yeah, I guess um, for you now, like you're 30 and um, you, do you feel like really comfortable with, with where you're at in, in your life, like away from the field? Um, yeah, yeah, I do. Yep. I still, um, I'm not sure I'm going to end up in terms of post footy, what I want to do. Yep. I don't have a set plan of, I, I want to um, study now and then I want to get into this field. I, I still don't know that. I still, I think I'd love to travel and live overseas and I think George would be the same. Um, and then whatever field I've got a heap of interests in landscaping. I'd love to work outdoors i'm into wine so dylan grimes i think runs or owns mount masson vineyard and um Does. with his partner and so I've, I've had a few uh conversations with him about it and it sounds like hard work but it sounds fun so yep. um but yeah um i am very happy with where i am um and i think i've got a good balance of playing on field and off field and that's something yep. we try and encourage Mark Worthington's our PDM and does a great job that you just want to encourage everyone to have something other than football because it won't last forever. Um, and I feel like I've got a good balance of um, off-field, on-field um, stuff going on, yeah. which I think helps Always. performance as well. Yeah. So yep. um, to answer your question, yeah, I'm, yeah it's good. Yeah. <laughs> You're probably one of the most competitive person that I've met. Um, so whether it's table tennis... NBA and <laughs> Premier, NBA hang Premier League fantasy, yeah. NBA hang time, um, quizzes as well. So you really yeah. take pride in being like the quiz master, yeah, yeah, don't yeah. you? Yeah, so the quiz master, which is taken off at the club actually yeah. now. So Cam, myself, Josh Cowan used to play with the club, Benny when he's at coffees with us. So we always just do the quiz in the paper, which is good. So yeah, um, yeah I love it. I think it's good. I think it helps with your general knowledge. And maybe I'm a bit of a control freak, so I like to just ask the questions. <laughs> Um, rather than answer them. Um, but, yeah, especially if you're asking the questions and it's me versus Cam, I'm, yeah, super competitive, which <laughs> you've got to be because you, you're trying to win games of football and yep. when the game's on the line, super competitive people are the ones that probably stand up and you see danger, he makes things happen. It's it's not by fluke. It's because he's worked hard and he hates losing. So yep. um, I'm the same. I hate losing footy, but I hate losing table tennis, hate losing <laughs> the quiz, just everything. So, yeah. Um, which is probably a bit obnoxious at times, but um, got me through with my brother a lot of NBA hang time wins against you <laughs> and Cam. <laughs> yeah. Growing up. No, good memories, good memories. Um, and the, the number 46. So I guess when you first came to the club, number 46 was the only one available, wasn't it? <laughs> um, I was 48. Oh yeah, oh, yeah you were too. When I first got it. So yeah. um, Joffa Simkin was 46, Ryan Bathy 47. And then after my... Two months of being there, that 2012 season, then they cut the list down to 46. Um, Bath went to... Did Bath go to 42? And Joff went to Hawthorne. Yeah, yep. So I just got given 46. Um, and then lucky enough to play my first game yep. in 46. And there's not that much history with the 46 number at Geelong, so I've really wanted to make... I suppose make that my own. And mm -hmm. um, Yeah, it's cool. To, it's, a, it's an amazing feeling to see a kid in the stands wear the number 46 there's not many but um i, I always said i was going to keep it i sort of had a really good think about it when harry retired um i spoke to george horn smith about it a little bit i didn't i didn't call harry i was going to call him if i wanted it um to ask him his permission but that was the only one i was probably thinking of changing was last season when harry finished up um to go number seven yep. um and I decided against it for whatever reasons. But, um, yeah, so I hope to stay in 46 my whole career. And, um, yeah, it's... yeah, it's Make your own legacy. Yeah, it's been good. Yeah. Now, last couple. Um, you're a massive cycling fan and you love your coffee, even though you can't make it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You've just got a new coffee yeah. machine. Um, I you liked my coffee the other day. Far out. Yeah, right I, was it's I, was, a lie. I was joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so... I guess it, where does that come from? And I think you've always had that um, that approach that it's important to ma maintain fitness away from, from footy and even in the off-season and stuff like that, you, you make sure you train pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've, I don't know, just I enjoyed sport 
in general as a kid. So I, I got into the Tour de France. So I've, I really like the cycling um, from a young from a young age, and and now with the off season stuff, um, Sammy Menegol is massive into the riding. So yeah. shout out Pedal Mafia. Shout out Pedal Mafia, Jay <laughs> Barron, you're doing a great job, mate. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, about five years ago or something, I I I got a bike before footy, but I then got a a better bike yep. that I, one that I'm probably going to keep for a long time and and try and knock some k's in, into it. So um, yeah, that's always been fun and. Um, to try and do some rides in the off season, and then um, since Men has got me into it, and then we've got a few others, and Cam's loving it, you're loving it now, so it's good. We've got a little good little crew, and um, some days it's 100k rides where if you've got whatever a week or two off, or in the off season where you're trying to push yourself, but recovery rides are the best. It's 30k's cruising with three coffees in between, <laughs> so we're just these cycling wankers that sit in cafes and lycra, <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> do the quiz, so. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just fun. It's and as you mentioned, the sports and off season keeping fit. Um, I try and do a few things other than the football in the off season to keep me loving football. So, yeah. whether that's running, um, playing a bit of soccer, cycling, going for hikes, bushwalks, whatever it might be. Um, I think all that different stuff is is very beneficial. Yeah. Cool. Um, congratulations on your two hundredth game, mate. Thank you, mate. It's um, you. amazing achievement. I think playing in, in the under elevens with you. You can see the talent, but um, you obviously never really interested in footy. But it was um, it's great from my point of view that you're able to to make it and make a, a really good career. So congratulations on the 200th game, and hopefully I'm there in the stands cheering you on. Yeah, Benny. Yeah, is thanks very much, mate. I'm uh, I'm very much looking forward to it, and um, yeah, not sure about crowds yet, but I hope there is, and can wave to my mum and dad and family and friends. It's I think it'll be something really special. So thanks very much. Good stuff. Thanks for joining us on the Over the PA podcast. Good on you, mate. Like it.